So you bought yourself a pistol and you bought yourself a red dot and now you want to train with a red dot. Is that tape over your glass? Yeah, tape on my red dot, yeah. How do you see your target? Oh, with my left eye. You're a right eye goblin. Yeah, I just, I focus on the reticle with my right eye and look at the target with my left eye. What's going on here? <laughs> Maybe we should talk about how to train with your pistol red dot and why tape might be an effective training tool. Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms. We've got Kaya back with us. What's up guys? And we're out here at Take Game Training and Range. We're here to talk about some pistol shooting, but specifically pistol shooting with red dots. We've got an assortment of different types of red dots with us today. We've obviously got the Vortex Viper on this Shadow Systems. This actually is a Glock 19 Gen 4 uh, slide assembly, receiver assembly, barrel assembly, all that type of stuff. Uh, but it does have the Trijicon suppressor height sights, and of course the Vortex Viper red dot. We're gonna be talking about uh, shooting with red dot sights and kind of like target focus versus uh, sight focus. Sight yeah. focus. Thank you. And then we've got on this guy. Why don't you tell us about the Glock 45 you got? Just a Glock 45 with a hollow sun closed emitter red dot. Yeah, that is it. And stock, stock Glock, and that's how I like them. Yeah, <laughs> they work. <laughs> they, they work just exactly. fine that way. Yep. Yep. We've got it over here, and uh, really cool hollow sun closed emitter, which we have done another video on this. Yep. Very, very cool. And we're gonna go ahead and try the uh, these two different dots on Glocks. Yeah. Target focus versus sight focus. Because a lot of people, you get it, because iron sights, they're sight focus, right? Yeah. Line them up, sight picture, sight alignment, mm. you get that front sight focus, right? Yeah. With a red dot, a lot of people do this. They still close that one eye or whatever and look through the glass, oh, whatever. Mm. But in fact, you're supposed to be looking at the target and getting that in between yourself and the target and it should be there, right? Right, yeah, so you are more sight focused like what Kaya's trying to say on iron sights is mm -hmm. whenever I'm aiming down on this pistol here and I'm looking, I wanna make sure that my front sight is what's really clear to me and it's mm -hmm. I see the overlay on a blurry target, right? Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what, kinda what you wanna be going for. Versus if I'm actually focusing on the red dot, the reticle on my optic here, then let's say I'm just gonna aim at, you know, a piece of my forerunner over yeah. there. <laughs> Just want to make sure I don't shoot my car. Now, uh, <laughs> when I do that there, I'm focusing on the actual target and I'm bringing the red dot to where I'm going. If I aim at like the, the logo there, bam. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm bringing, I'm focusing on the target coming up. Here it is, there's the red dot, pull the trigger versus if I'm moving now, am I focusing on the front sight? Now I'm focusing on the front sight and there it is over the target, pull the trigger, right? Exactly. So, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit different to try to practice that for some people, especially because we've done plenty of videos now talking about shooting with a red dot. It's gonna be something that a lot of people are gonna have a little bit of a difficulty with, especially if you come from iron sights, as you should, but that also kind of helps you too if you have those raised sights, like what I like to have, because now it's like, okay, we'll just aim at the target like you naturally would with your iron sights. And then when you do that, you're like, oh, now I can find the reticle. You're not doing this little hunting game, like, okay, where's the red dot? You know what I mean? Yep. And of course I've got with me also my SIG 320 VTAC here. This is a really cool pistol. I've been shooting it for quite some time, like it a lot, you know? Oh yeah. Uh, except, you know, I will say that you know, when you when we were all together doing that competition, I did actually go to the SAR pistol because, and wound up doing pretty well with it, uh, because I think I just relied too much on the dot on the dot that I didn't yeah. necessarily Which have we found out exactly yeah. it wasn't to give you credit it was, it was a little off that's correct yeah. so I'm like whoopsies yeah. but anyway so there we go so we've got the sig Romeo on this guy here that will be running a little bit too today and I'll just kind of do a comparison but really let's just go ahead and focus on uh, getting some hits on targets at different yeah. different uh, ranges different distances yep. and uh, let's just see how we do so let's go ahead and hop into this so we're downrange now, but something that I've been called out for before is saying something like, uh, earn your right to go to the range, right? Why'd they call you out for that? Uh, well, somebody said that I sounded, I can't remember exactly what the words were, but like, I don't know. Uh, it, it was not kind words being thrown in my direction, but yeah. at the same time, I'm kind of trying to save you money as well. Because what I mean by that is do some dry fire reps, do some practice at home. Because what you don't want to have happen is you come to the range now, right? And now you've got fully loaded mags and everything else, and you're just now trying to figure out how the heck to use your red dot. You can't find it, but you're going to still try to be really quick with it. So you're going to come up, you're going to go bang, and you're going to be like, wow, I don't know where I freaking hit. Yep. I don't know where I'm hitting. I can't find anything. And then all of a sudden, you actually sit there, you practice, you do exactly what I'm doing right now with a little bit of dry fire. You come up, you're here, you're here, boom, on target. And you might be wondering why I have a piece of tape over my red dot. We'll get to that here in just a moment. But I can tell you right now that all these shots would be hits 
that I can find my red dot quick and that they would be accurate. You know guys, what Clint is trying to tell you is that to earn the right to go to the range is not necessarily you don't have the right to go to the range, it's that you've got a few things to do before you get there with the live ammunition and do it because it is it's dangerous, you need to, it's, it requires responsibility. Every police training that I've gone through, and I've gone through three academies, local, state, federal, every single one of them, before I ever fired live rounds, they made us do exactly what Clint was showing. Dry fire, know what this thing is, learn all about it, dry fire, get those fundamentals going before we had the right to send live rounds down range. We did the same thing in Marine Corps boot camp. We had this thing go. called grass week, literally one whole week. Yeah. You're in the grass, you're aiming in at a barrel and you're yeah. just sitting there learning, getting your sight picture, side alignment, and you're just pulling the trigger. That's it. That's all. Right. So that's what he's trying to say. But cool, but I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So let's go ahead. Let's get you a couple rounds down range here, and won't you give them a couple of pointers about how to go ahead and get that sight picture? Yeah. So guys, everybody knows with iron sights. Forget the red dot, right? We've got the uh, sight alignment. Sight alignment means you've got the uh, rear sight, front sight, the front sight, in the middle of rear sight, same equal height, equal light, which means the front sight post is going to be same height as the uh, rear sight post. And then you focus on the front sight. They always say the traditional teaching style is the target is slightly blurry, your front sight is crisp clear, and you squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and the gun till the gun goes bang. That is with iron sights, and that is strictly sight focused. A lot of police officers, you know, when they get in a gunfight, they point their gun at the person, the assailant, right? And of course, naturally, both eyes open, you're looking at the bad guy and you start firing, you have some accuracy issues because you're looking over your sights, not necessarily lining up your sights, not necessarily looking at the front sight. You're not sight focused, you're target focused at that time. And you have accuracy issues because with, front, with iron sights, you gotta focus on the sights. Now red dots are different. Red dots are target focused machines, right? You, you, you're looking at your target, I've got a bad guy downrange, and this is loaded, and I, point my gun at the bad guy and all I see is the bad guy and there's a dot on the bad guy and I just get fired. That's it. So I didn't line anything up. I'm looking at the bad guy. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Yep, he's got a gun. See what I'm saying? I'm looking at the guy bringing the gun between my eyes and the bad guy. I am looking at the bad guy and the dot just appears there. People make the mistake of closing one eye like you would on a, most people do, on an iron sight setup. Closing the one eye, looking through your dominant eye, through the glass, find the dot, putting that on the target and shoot it like an iron sights. That's not how red dots are supposed to be used. You're supposed to look at the target and the dot appears. This whole frame of the dot, it's very, very blurry and target is extremely clear and the dot on the target is very clear. This area is very blurry. So you're seeing the bad guy, his hands, his movements, everything. So you're not more messing around with the front sight. You're not taking your uh, focus off of the bad guy. You're looking at the bad guy and you got your dot. That's it, so that's the beauty of red dots. Red dots, target focused and iron sights are sight focused, which is not as good. And based on statistics, law enforcement, ever since they switched to red dots, their accuracy on qualifications increased significantly, which is less low stress, but even during gunfights, their accuracy increased significantly. So target focused and sight focused. And if you're asking me, I don't recommend cross training. And some people are gonna be like, oh, come on, I'm supposed to know the the iron sights as much as red dot. I agree. I want you to know the fundamentals about the iron sights. You need to know all that. Just like you're using, using your rifle. When is the last time you used your rifle with iron sights if you got a dot on? You know how to use it, but you always train with your dot on. Don't cross train because during high, high stress situations, your um, muscle memory is going to kick in. And if you go back and forth between the two, you're going to confuse yourself. So pick one setup and train with that. Know the other stuff, but pick one setup and train with that. In this case, red dot, no-brainer. 
So Kaya brought up a lot of good points for different types of cross training and why maybe you should versus shouldn't do that. Uh, me personally, again, this is different styles, different opinions, different perspective. I like to familiarize myself with both and then really heavily train on one or the other. So a lot like what Kaya was saying. And it really comes, kind of comes down to the different gun that I'm util utilizing. Put it this way, on my Breda M9A3, I don't have a red dot sight on there. So I'm gonna be running irons the entire time. And for that gun, when I pick it up, I know that's what I'm gonna be focused on. However, for my Glock, or my FNX or my 320, all of these which utilize red dots, that's what I'm gonna be focusing on. However, I do like to turn off the red dot and go just iron sights on occasion. But for today, I'm actually gonna be showing you guys, again, YouTube, not liking me taking mags out of guns, whatever. What I'm gonna be showing you guys is why I might have a piece of tape over my red dot. A lot of you all might be focusing a lot on the optic itself or on your reticle and not so much on the target down range. So, you might not exactly be placing the red dot where it should. What this is gonna force you to do also is make sure that you're shooting with both eyes open. If you start to wink or anything like that, what you'll notice is, well, you're not gonna have quite as quick a target acquisition and you might actually be throwing your shot off as well. So with all of that being said, what I'm gonna be showing you guys today is what's called the bend and aiming concept. It's where you utilize both eyes. You're gonna be utilizing your right eye, your dominant eye in this case, which is my right eye, is going to be focusing on the reticle. My non-dominant eye, my left eye, is gonna be focusing on the target. My brain will communicate with both eyeballs and they're gonna translate over one another. So I'll be aiming at both targets. Let's just back it up just for fun here. Let's get it about maybe 15, 20 yards or so just to try it out. I'll go ahead and just throw a couple rounds down range. Again, I can still see my reticle. I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up exactly or not. I'll still be able to see my reticle, but it's gonna be just over the black tape, not over the target. So if I were to be shooting now and I close one eye, I can pretty much say I'm you know, generally in that right area, but I'm gonna keep both eyes open and let's just see if I can hit these targets today, all right? Well, other than a couple of misses, which I don't think were my uh, side alignment, but it's definitely my trigger pull, jerking the trigger a little bit. Ultimately, again, what this allows me to do is focus on both, right? I can focus my reticle on my dominant eye, my target on the non-dominant eye. Again, that's called the bend and aiming concept, which uh, Trigicon utilizes with the ACOG, right? So if you're utilizing a four by power, a four power optic like the ACOG is, you have that magnification at close quarters, you're not gonna be utilizing that magnification, but you know what's not magnified? Your natural eye, or as one power is your eyeball, right? It's your natural vision. So if you keep both eyes open and you teach yourself, train yourself how to to do that you'll be able to make accurate hits with you know op when you can't really see through your optic aim point in fact actually originally designed their red dots and this is why all their red dots ship with a flat black uh, front sight, or I guess I could say objective lens cover, and then they have a transparent rear lens cover which allows you to see through it if you just open up right however if you keep that closed much like what you see here right now what that allows you to do is keep both eyes open. You're not getting any type of reflective glare or anything, and you're still able to make those accurate hits on target, which is a nice thing. I have to slow myself down a little bit. I notice I am jerking just a little bit, but ultimately I'm still able to get a majority of my hits on target even though I can't see through my optic right so these are just little hints and tips I guess you could say next time you're at the range you want to try something a little bit different really slow it down and actually focus a little bit more on shot placement these are condensed c-zone targets so when we go down range and just kind of show you the size of these you'll see that these are actually pretty small targets still which does cause you to slow it down a little bit get a little bit sh tighter shot placement aim small miss small we've all heard that right in fact let's uh, finish this video out down range really quick and do that uh, size comparison so just for size comparison, these are the targets that we're shooting at today. We've got the other condensed C-zone there. You know, only about maybe six, seven yeah. feet of separ... It's a little bit more than that. Yeah. Maybe about eight, ten, eight, eight feet of separation between the two. So we're not doing anything absolutely crazy, you know, or anything like that. But we're just keeping it simple, having some fun today, and ultimately just familiarizing ourselves with our red dots, of course. And it's never bad to get down to the fundamentals and the basics and just practice, right? Get those reps in and things like that. And then you'll be able to pick it up a little bit quicker down you know, a little bit further down the road, right? Oh, yeah. So anyway, there's that for you guys. And don't forget to, if you've liked our video so far, go ahead and give us a like. Make sure you're subscribed to us on Rumble because, well, 
I'll be able to take the magazine out there and stuff like that instead of having to turn my back and do all that because YouTube's weird, but whatever. Anyway, cfcontest.com, classicfirearms.com is where you can get your entries in on our current giveaway. We've teamed up with Demo Ranch on this one. This is the M200 Intervention, chambered in 408 Shytac with the Trujicon AccuPoint and the Reptilia mount. This thing is an absolute beast that Kaya still hasn't shot. Yeah, thanks for reminding me that. I've never, I haven't forgotten it, so don't worry. <laughs> Code word demo to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries, guys. We'll see you down in the comments section down below. If you have any other tent, hit tents, hints, tips, tents, tricks. Tents too, we'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> right. If you guys have any other, you know, I guess uh, recommendations is another word we could use, uh, of training advice that somebody else could use that's never shot with a pistol red dot or anything like that, let them know down in the uh, comment section and look up Sage Dynamics also. They have a really good article written up about why red dots are pretty much superior to iron sights and law enforcement and stuff Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Yeah, no I, doubt. Yeah. And I agree, agree with that too. Mm -hmm. So guys, as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com. Guess what, YouTube? I'm taking the magazine out. In and out, in and out, in and out.